Hey everybody and welcome to the uh, Adapt to Thrive series um, by us, me, Yenna. Um, we are covering stories about companies that are reacting to the public health crisis, um, what they're doing to not only survive but also thrive in these times. Um, all different companies, all different sectors, all different sizes. And today we are lucky to be joined by one of our very own brand partners who support everything we do here at Yenna. Um, and that is in the form of Rocket Makers, a software and app development agency based in Bath. Uh, we have two people with us on this episode. So we have Richard and Bryony. Uh, I think I'll probably go to you in that order and, and let you introduce yourselves um, uh, as our partners over there. Thanks, Ash. Great. So, yeah, thanks for having us on, uh, and great to to see you uh, thriving in your kitchen there. I think it's your kitchen in the background. It is, uh, yeah. So. Great. Yeah, so Rocket Makers, uh, we've been around for uh, about 12 years, uh, all told. And we get involved with a lot of really early stage startup businesses, uh, scale up businesses as well. So companies that have grown through that startup phase and also companies that want to do uh, bigger innovation projects. So make perhaps more corporate innovation as well. And uh, yeah, and so we are finding this just as strange as everybody else, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, and your, yourself, Bryony? Great. Yeah, thanks, Ash. Um, lovely to see you uh, and all of the crowd, masses of virtual crowds watching, I'm sure, as well, too. Um, so I'm Bryony Phillips. I work with Rocket Makers four days a week um, and uh, really kind of focusing on our efforts there around the scaling businesses, so fast growth companies um, that have ambitions to scale significantly, um, whether they meet the, the official definition or perhaps not, um, but looking at across the UK and beyond to, to find those companies um, through interesting marketing messages. And also through some work that I do around investment. Um, so uh, Rocket Makers kindly gifts a day of my week each week to uh, TechSpark, where I actually work for a project called the Investment Activator Programme. Um, and that programme is intended to really make sure that companies in the southwest where we're based um, are able to access uh, investment support um, and that they are hopefully seeing a, a greater flow of capital coming through to them. Um, not to say that that is necessarily uh, the case, particularly at the moment but um yeah not the focus of the conversation today but an important part of the work that we do absolutely i think it uh it should go without saying but there are a lot of people that won't know who you are based all over the rest of the uk and the world um uh, they're rocket makers and both of you as individuals do a, a huge amount for the startup ecosystem generally across the board and definitely uh, in the region not only through your support of of us and what we do but also with work like TechSpark uh, locally, a big shout out to Ben over there, who I know is doing lots of work also. Um, so uh, yeah, a huge thank you on behalf of everybody um, for doing the work that you, you always do uh, and do so well. Um, so the elephant in the room, uh, the obvious one is the, the public health crisis hits and, uh, and often I imagine, or it's understood that marketing budgets or digital transformation budgets are often the first thing to be hit. Um, you work with companies of all different sizes, startups, scale-ups, and corporates, as you mentioned. I'm curious as to what your first thoughts were. Did you? How did you react? Did you react? Um, uh, and then we'll get into the actions that you've taken. How, how has it affected you? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? I, I guess the um, I guess the first thing that I was seeing was every business seemed to be shouting out that uh, don't worry, it's business as usual. And I was thinking, this is just absolute bullshit. Nothing about this is business as usual. And uh, yet this, this kind of idea that we, we want to give this message that we're just carrying on and, uh, and it's, it's fine. And if you're one of our customers, then don't worry about it. We're there and uh, there to support you. And, and I kind of get that because, you know, we want to support our customers and we are there. And we're in a really fortunate position because we're a digital business and, uh, and, and we can work at home and and deliver software and design software in in ways that perhaps other industries can't so i guess we're really really fortunate uh, but i guess that a lot of our customers uh startup businesses scale up businesses have just had that rug ripped out beneath them if you look at uh you know we we work with a really uh, interesting growing scale up travel company called travel local and uh and they've raised you know millions of pounds last uh, year or so uh, including sort of channel four ventures they're advertising on tv and stuff and just well a nobody's going traveling anyway because you can't but but the idea of perhaps going traveling in the way that 
they have this kind of great idea of uh, Asian activities which are really localized where you get the best benefit of, of uh, locals telling you how to have the best uh, experience in their environment. Uh, it, all of that's just gone away. So, uh, and on the flip side, we're seeing companies that are coming to us and saying, we've got a, a great new medical testing device or, um, or we've got some new mental health uh, app that we need getting built, uh, which is really going to affect and, and improve life in these circumstances. So it's really polarizing for me to, to see this at the moment. What, would, what do you think, Brian? Anything else? Yeah, I think it's that, that kind of unforgiving impact across industries that's being reported in the media that's really um, interesting, particularly when you start to see it on a kind of case by case basis like we do at Rocket Makers. So seeing those individual experiences um, really brings that to life. And, and certainly the impact is there, whether or not it's um, kind of closing down business and furloughing staff or, or whether it is a significant business opportunity in terms of um, growing a new or pivoting. Um, and we're starting, you know, we're thankfully we're in a position where we're a kind of trusted partner and we're in position to to kind of leap in and, and support those companies with those new innovative ideas or, or with continuing business as usual wherever that's possible sure so it sounds like the way that you've been working with clients uh, for a while is in a relationship basis it's i'm sure there are projects but it sounds like there are projects among a larger grander scheme of things in which you end up working on multiple um or on an ongoing basis and that's probably hedged bets against any kind of downturn and allows you to continue business as usual as, as you know some of the public might be putting it I'm curious as to uh, your closeness to the investment ecosystem Ryan how uh, how you're seeing that affected we're seeing lots of you know narrative on Twitter from US VCs saying it's business as usual but uh, the numbers are already down about money going into companies uh, in terms of size and number of checks in, in such a short period of time how how do you see that being affected is that going to affect rocket makers because i know obviously you work with scale ups who, who who do raise funding um or do you think it will normalize and maybe the money just goes in, into different companies uh, of whom you can also help anyway i guess it depends a bit on stage um so uh, and it's it is reflected very much in in rocket makers clients because often we are working with companies who'll be raising investment whether they are as you say scale ups or or whether they're earlier stage startups um and really what we're seeing so far is a real um, mixed experience for them. So some people are, um, have been you know, really close to the end of a raise. Um, someone I was speaking to just last week was saying they've, you know, they thought they'd, they were basically there. They'd hit the, the number they were looking for. Um, and two of those angel investors, so they're a fairly early stage company looking for 100, 150K. And two of those early stage angel investors have said, actually, hang on, I need to take a look at my portfolio and, and really work out whether or not this is something I should be doing right now um, and put the brakes on it effectively. Effectively, um, and that puts that company um, in the sticks because obviously they can't close the round um, and so they're now in a position where they can't go ahead with the number of projects they were thinking of doing so um, we're seeing that with our clients we're seeing it with potential clients and people we speak to um, you know as you mentioned we're kind of very active in the community um, so we're kind of gathering different data points from different places um, but then we're also seeing some later stage companies who had got to the same position and have successfully closed those rounds and, and people are continuing to kind of push forward. Um, and so far I haven't really managed to gather any real um, kind of trends or, or, or themes in terms of, well, okay, which ones are um, being more successful in raising those funds. Um, perhaps, perhaps people who are those kind of more serial entrepreneurs who have more experience. Um, um, that's, that's, you know, I don't have enough data to be able to evidence that, that trend, really. Um, so there's a bit of a balance going on. I think the, uh, the important and exciting thing is that, you know, Rocket Makers as a company and Richard, obviously, in building that culture from the ground up and, and Brian, you joining uh, not too long ago. Um, it just goes to show that the extra day you have a week to work on insight into the investment activity in the region is clearly a really smart strategic decision from a rocket maker's point of view because it allows you to support your clients through times like this when there is uncertainty and you can have a multi-stringed bow as it were to be able to help them not only with their development but also with their planning around their fundraise and and uh, undoubtedly that's going to see you come out uh, stronger uh, through this and after this. Um, but that does lead me into a question around culture. So um, Rocket Makers, for those of you who haven't seen, I'm sure there are some photos somewhere on our Instagram or on our channels um, showing it, but have one of the coolest offices in the region. There is a, 
a, a rocket fuselage in the office as a meeting space. There is an AR launch pad where you can point your phone at a circle uh, of their logo on the floor and see a rocket launch through it. There is a VR gaming station and a whole bunch of other things um, in, in the office. There's 29 people in, part, in the team. They're all remote right now. Was that something that you, you uh, built in as kind of a, a redundancy in the business culture, just in case this was to happen at some point? Have you always allowed remote working and therefore was it really easy to switch to? Um, just wondering how, if there was any planning or, or any thinking behind that, Richard. Yeah, I, I really wish I was that smart, Ash. <laughs> it was, uh, no, I mean, I think really, I mean, we've, again, a digital business. So, you know, people do work at home or, or um, so there's always that capability and, and we've already always had the sort of VPN infrastructure and stuff to allow all that sort of stuff. So, so tick all the boxes in terms of the technology and uh, ability for people to do it. But I think the thing that we never really, and I, I personally never got my head around was just how much we as a company rely on being physically in the same space with each other. And just having those odd side conversations or just somebody helping somebody else out really quickly. And we've really noticed that being really hard to do in this. I mean, when people are, are on video calls, it's pretty hard to just butt in and say, oh, by the way, can you show us this or give us that? And, and, and it, just, it just doesn't work in the same sort of way. And I guess I've, I've also found that you know, we spend a lot of time doing whiteboard sessions and just engaging in real workshoppy interesting engaging stuff with people dragging ideas out playing with those ideas and uh, and mashing them on on glass boards and even though there's great technology around for doing that sort of thing remotely it just doesn't compare with the dyna dynamism of uh, of being in the space so i you know yes we can get by and we're kind of doing an okay job but this is kind of my like business as usual thing it's like it's it's not business as usual for us. We're not as good at doing those workshops in this sort of environment as we used to be. Now, who knows how long this is going to go on for. And frankly, we probably better get our stuff together to, uh, to make sure that we are getting better at it. Uh, but I think that's, and there's also just the, um, in terms of the culture, I mean, it's, it's all a bit about, I think when you're building a, a startup business yourself, scale up business, perhaps as we perhaps are now, um, it's all about the culture. It's all about the people, the relationships that are there. And frankly, that's why I set it up with my co-founders was, was wanted to work with people that I wanted to work with. And, uh, and I think it's, it's just challenging to kind of keep that, um, that dynamic going. I mean, we have uh, an all company meeting at, uh, once a day and we basically just, everybody rattles through what they're up to, just how they're feeling, just checking in that everybody's well, uh, and, uh, and going, uh, and even, even that we've kind of had to, uh, up our game a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I hear rumblings of, uh, of these standup meetings through, uh, Bryony's blog post, uh, which we will, I'll, I'll link to, uh, in the description of this video, but, uh, I'm curious as from the other side, from, from, from the, the newbie side, how has that felt for you, Bryony, joining a team and then not, not too long after, I think it was it been a year now, time flies when you're having fun, probably not far off that, but, um, how has that been for you? And, and as part of that team, uh, blending into those stand-up sessions with people who you've probably not had as much time as Richard to build a, a, a you know, a relationship with. Yeah. Um, so it's actually only six months, would you believe? Ash? Um, yeah, you just doubled my time. Um, <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. It's been really interesting because I think um, it's one of the things that struck me most when I first started at Rocket Makers and anyone who, you know, how it is, everyone's like, how are you getting on in the new job? My first answer was always, as you have said, we have an incredible office, an amazing team. Like, that's just the perfect starting point. Um, and Rich is absolutely right. He has brought together a really awesome bunch of people who are really passionate, committed, caring, supportive of one another. They have insane banter, which I am just starting to catch up with. That's probably the hardest thing. Um, when uh, we, so stand up has become a kind of uh, a creative um, pursuit, should we say. So each day someone else takes it on and comes up with a creative way of uh, deciding the order of who's going to say their update next. Um, and so that is a really good example of where I have been like, whoa, mind blown. Um, when Johnny bought out um, dice and was like, he's going to use dice to decide who goes first. Like dice have only got six sides. And I was like, how many dice has he got? And then he showed the dice to the screen. And I'm like, why has that dice got 20 sides? Um, like, 
blew my mind no joke um but no the, there's been that there was phil wearing a horse's head there's been um just general kind of um light-heartedness that really adds a little um something different to the middle of your day and kind of sets you up for a really positive afternoon which is really lovely yeah um, I'm yeah really blown away what i'm seeming to find is uh, from these calls from with, with other founders and, and other teams is that uh, people are actually enjoying getting more of the personality of the person. They, they have less of their work hat on and more of their home hat on. And people are seeing their, you know, uh, fellow, uh, fellow employees and colleagues, uh, babies and pets for the first time and kitchens for the first <laughs> time. And, uh, and it's, and it's starting to break down walls. And I think, uh, certainly from like an investment ecosystem point of view, what we're seeing is it's kind of starting to level the playing field rather than, you know, rich people being in their ivory towers and being the harborers of all this cash that you know people are coming in asking for it's actually just one person on a zoom call uh, to another person on a zoom call uh, one of them has access to money and the other one has access to uh, a vision and a dream that they want to build and it's it, I'm, I'm wondering depending on how long this goes on whether that starts to level the playing field of the pretension of, of, of high level investment um, just a just a thought not uh, not a question because nobody can really predict that I guess but um, <laughs> tangibles and tips um so uh obviously our community of startups they're scale-ups they're wondering what can they do to react and what i really love is your your candidness around not really understanding what's going on at the moment either richard you know with a company that's um really substantial as as much as rocket makers is um, still trying to figure it out too but are you for calls like this? Are you, you know, big Zoom fans? Are you on Slack all the time? Is Microsoft Teams your preference? Anything that people might not know about at the moment that they should uh, they should be using? Oh yeah, great questions. Uh, so um, so technology wise, yeah, we uh, we tend to use a lot of Google stuff. So we uh, use Google Suite generally. Uh, Slack for sort of messaging. We use a lot of Jira stuff for project management and and things that are there. Zoom, absolutely. So so all of those things, yeah, as uh, as 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 normal. Um, I guess you know, I, I guess I've got enough grey hairs, Ash. Certainly more than you. It, unfortunately, that's the the case. Uh, that I I kind of went through the dot com crisis when I was at Microsoft, and and then I've you know we started our business just a few months before the financial crisis. Uh, and in 2007, the crisis in 2008, and uh, so we we started our business at a really bad time fundamentally, uh, and no one really predicted that. I mean, some some were. I certainly didn't see it coming. And uh, so you can you can build businesses in hard times, and it's finding those opportunities and having that positivity and, and attitude, and perseverance, and just really uh, really committing to you know if you have this dream, making sure that that dream is going to happen. And and in some ways. The only way that you can do that is um, by sometimes you need to put it off for a little bit. Sometimes uh, if, you've, if you've raised some money, you need to make sure that you're just preserving that cash. I mean, when we've, we've, we've nearly been out of business, um, you know, certainly three times I can think of in 12 years where we just, you know, we weren't managing cash flow uh, or, or just something came up and, and a bit of it in the backside and, and we weren't ready for it, didn't have that reserve. Um, and... And frankly, you know, everybody knows you run a business on cash flow. I, I'd read the books before I even started a business and, and I still got bitten each time. So um, I, think, I think the key thing for me is if you, you know, cash is king in an environment like this. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is just take a step back, have a breather, reevaluate where you are, look at your plans and recognize that, you know, the plans are going to be different. You know, we've certainly done that. It's, uh, you know, our, our, our financial planning and, uh, and approach. I spent a, way more time over the last three or four weeks than I ever wanted to do looking back at that sort of stuff. Um, but it's, you know, it's the world of change. And I guess, you know, we're in the world of software development, agile development is everyone think that, that they know their product and they're going to get it out. I know for a fact that they don't know their product and that it's going to change. And, uh, and all these external conditions can affect you. So I think it's, it's, it's really is for me, take that breath, focus, um, try and preserve cash and, uh, and build relationships with people who, who can help. And the best way of doing that, and I think you do that incredibly well, is by giving first. You know, go and, you know, if you can help other people, uh, then try and do that. And, uh, and I believe ultimately you'll get rewarded for doing that sort of thing. I couldn't say it better myself. I think, you know, you've covered all the angles there around 
uh, giving first and, and taking this time as an opportunity to look at your financials, which, yeah, we also see as one of the key reasons that people trip up sometimes, you know, there's, the, there's some work that we're going to be doing around onboarding people into their own company and, and financial uh, education is going to be a key part of that because, you know, uh, the unit economics of a business are things that nobody really teaches us, even when we're sat on the sofa and we just decide to start that business, nothing appears to help us figure those things out. And so that's, uh, that's going to be something we're going to be working on very soon uh, and probably knocking on your door for uh, further advice and probably some work on. So, uh, so keep looking out for that. But um, before we wrap up, uh, I just wanted to uh, find out if there was any other things uh, or, or any other advice or thoughts or feelings that you've, you've got during this time. Uh, any, any advice that you might be able to give the, the startups and the scale ups of the world or, or anything you might want to tell us about what's happening at Rocket Makers? Uh, great. So, uh, well, I guess part, part of it is I taking my own advice a bit. I, you know, I don't think my wife's never seen me so much not going to events and, and stuff there. So actually taking <laughs> opportunities of the time of being, uh, you know, at the home and, uh, and confined is, is actually a great thing. So I think, yeah, looking at the positivities of, uh, side of all of this is an important thing to do and you know i'm i'm not all that good at taking a step back and uh and taking a breather myself but i'm i'm definitely doing that at the moment and it's a good thing i think so uh so that's great good advice. Temple, i'm gonna go temple. to brian actually because uh i i realize there are some secret tips that you might be able to apply here <laughs> we're all going to our fridges constantly and eating and baking sourdough starters and banana bread which is definitely on my list for the weekend but for those who don't for those who don't know Bryony is a uh, qualified nutritionist among all the other talents that she has um any quick tips about you know not to undermine your knowledge about anything else because i'd love to hear that advice too but any advice as to what we should be eating and drinking whilst we're slaving away at our laptops now on our sofas rather than at our desks <laughs> Eat more vegetables. I think uh, that seems to be my mantra at the moment. Um, drink water, uh, keep yourself hydrated. But yeah, vegetables really are our secret weapon in this world. And um, the more of those that we can eat, then the more nutrients and minerals our bodies have to fight off any kind of dodgy illnesses that might come our way. Um, and then I would also say, I think picking up on your comments about levelling the playing field and giving people more access to uh, people that they wouldn't normally necessarily be able to make a meeting with. I think making the most of that opportunity and recognizing that people's diaries might be a bit thinner on the ground at the moment um, and therefore asking for the meetings that you wouldn't normally ask for and, and just making the most of that kind of social capital because I think social connections and mental well-being is such a key thing and, and that comes from yes both social connection but also getting outside and, and you know doing your daily exercise and whatever else um, but uh, making sure that you're making the most of that and, and, and events like the the, you know the things that you're hosting on on to um and others that are hosted locally too um are definitely really valuable as well really fantastic advice um and on that note i should probably go for my one hour allotted daily run um so uh <laughs> i'm gonna wrap up there but a huge huge thank you to both of you for uh for joining us today for for the adapt for Life series um it sounds like uh, you've got a solid strategy, uh, whether you feel like it right now or not. Um, there's a lot there that we can we can all learn from, I'm sure. Um, if anybody anywhere has uh, has a, a project that they're considering or working on um, of, a, of, a, of a sizable nature that seems a little bit scary, then I can't think of a better team that, than Rocket Makers to talk about uh, getting that developed. Um, I'm, I've seen many things that you've been working on and we've even sent one of our members over who was working on a uh, tech product to help with, I think it was hurricane insurance, which is very niche. Uh, um, and I'm keen to find out how that went too. So there is probably nothing too bonkers to send you away um, as long as it's, uh, it's legit. So yeah, uh, make sure you're working on a real business there. But, um, but thank you both for, for joining us. Thank you, Rocket Makers, once again, for supporting everything we do here at Yenna. Um, and, uh, and yeah, if you need to, if they need to find you and they want to they want to send some stuff your way where where can people find you guys yeah we, we like bonkers for sure so uh yeah e email uh richard at rocketmakers.com uh Bryony at rocketmakers.com will get through to us and uh, yeah we'd love to have some conversations with people great great thank you so much for joining us guys um keep following the series uh, we'll have another episode up very soon i'm sure um and uh, and you know where to find rocket makers if you need them we'll see you again soon